What's up everyone? Welcome back to another review and this time we're taking a look at The Usual Suspects directed by Brian Singer, written by Christopher McQuarrie, starring an ensemble cast that includes Kevin Pollack, Stephen Baldwin, Gabriel Byrne, Benicio Del Toro, and Kevin Spacey. The Usual Suspects tells the story of a band of small-time criminals who become entangled in the merciless scheme of an unseen underworld kingpin. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to do my best to make this review as short and sweet as I possibly can. Overall, I thought The Usual Suspects was a damn good mystery crime thriller that is done in the same vein as Quentin Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs, in which it starts off at the ending, and then the rest of the movie is told through flashback where it builds up to that ending and everything in between. And then to cap it all off, has a twist that catches you completely off guard, and now when you rewatch the movie... You can kind of piece, you piece everything together. <clears throat> you can piece everything together that way. I thought The Usual Suspects was overall very well written and very well directed by Brian Singer. This was one of Brian Singer's earlier films before he went and did X-Men. And this was also one of the early writing credits of Christopher McQuarrie. I think these two as a duo did a really good job. Brian Singer has is a good director. You know, his personal problems aside, along with Kevin Spacey's personal problems aside... These guys are very talented. Now, Brian Singer is a very talented director, and I thought he did a great job at making at, at uh, and I thought he did a great job at emulating Quentin Tarantino, but also putting but also you know putting his own unique style to this to this film. You know, he did a great job. The utilization of the ensemble cast I thought was great. These guys have great on uh, have really good on screen chemistry with one another. I like their I like the bantering and I like the and I like the dynamics, and I also like how each of the five have their own you know have their own unique personality that makes them <clears throat> yeah like all the five have their own distinct personalities. I know Gabriel Byrne's character of Keaton he's more along the lines of a leader. He's also an ex cop who became a criminal, <clears throat> so he has so he's kind of so he's he's more or less I guess you could say reluctant to want to get back to want to get roped into into the capers that they got to do. Then you have the duo of uh, Fenster and McMahon is played by Del Toro, Benenzo Del Toro and Stephen Baldwin respectively. And I like these two. These two are my favorites. Like Stephen Baldwin's character of McManus, he's he's a wise he's a wise ass and and uh Baldwin gives him a lot of personality, especially during the infamous lineup scene where they all got to repeat a phrase. They all do it in their own unique different ways and Stephen Baldwin and the character and McManus does it in the way that did that just complete every time you watch it you just can't help but laugh at it the same thing with the way del toro the same way the same goes for del toro's character of fenster the way he has to repeat the line it's it's absolutely hysterical and and the personality that gave that uh, del toro gave the character of Fen of uh fenster is somebody who has a, like a garbled speech so every time he talks you can you can barely understand what he's saying but it's absolutely hilarious <laughs> like it's really well done really cool uh, and then you got Kevin Pollock, who plays the character, who plays the character of um, of Todd, and you know he was fine in the movie. He's funny. He's more he's more like the guy who is just you know who's willing to drop anyone on a dime if, if he thinks he's gonna get cut out of something. Like he's like that. He's that typical mob. He's that typical uh, crime guy who you know wants to make sure he's a part of everything just to make sure that his interests are protected. And then you have the mysterious one uh verbal played by kevin spacey and now verbal to me is one of my favorite characters and i am a fan of kevin spacey as an actor as i mentioned earlier even though he and brian singer even though he and brian singer have got a lot of controversy surrounding them you can't hide the fact that they're very talented at what they do kevin spacey is an extraordinarily talented actor and i thought he was fantastic as the character of verbal <laughs> and it's through the character of Verbal where this movie is told in mostly a flashback while he's being interrogated by this cop played by Chaz Palamentari. And it's through Verbal where we where we where, where we see all these chain of events lead up to the big uh, to the big uh, action sequence on this uh, freight boat where we believe that a bunch of where we where we believe by a man named Kaiser S S uh, Sozo Soise, whatever his name is is about to wipe out Argentinian drug lords and claim all their drug all the drugs for him and wipe out all their stash so that way he's the ultimate kingpin of everything. <clears throat> and Verbal weaves this very, you know, convoluted tale of just things happening way too perfectly for everything to come together. Now of course the <clears throat> now of course now of course Chaz Palamentari's police detective, you no, know, he's not really 
he's not really buying the story that's being told to him, but he's listening and he's trying to piece it together himself. And then when you get to the ending and how everything pays off, it's absolutely done in a brilliant way. And which I thought Christopher McQuarrie did a really good job at subverting your expectations. Like, you think you're being told one thing, and then once the ending happens and everything gets pieced together, it's like, okay. <laughs> uh, I got thrown for a loop. I like it. This movie has a twist that works and does not come across as forced or cheesy. It actually comes across as, to me, very meticulous. <clears throat> And that, that, that well, goes to credit for that goes to the to the talent on screen and off screen that put this movie together on a shoestring budget of six million dollars. It's amazing that Brian Singer had six million to work with, and he put together a great ensemble cast, not just the five principal actors, but the supporting cast. You got, like I mentioned, you have Chaz Palamenteri, you got Dan Hedaya, you have a young young Carlo Esposito before he became Gus in, in Breaking Bad. You know, this movie is loaded with talent, and I think every single one of these actors plays their roles to the fullest. Like, I actually like Do uh, but, uh, Esposito's character, because he, ha he's, he has a, he's has his own little subplot, where he's trying to get information out of one of two survivors of the, of the boat massacre. And this survivor is a Hungarian, is a Hungarian mobster who saw the face of Kaiser Soze. <clears throat> so the, his entire subplot is trying to get this mobster to talk, and trying to piece together everything himself, and that correlates with the Chaz, with Chaz Palamenteri's character, who's trying to get, the, who's trying to get the, uh, who's trying to get verbal to paint him a picture of all the events that led up to the big boat massacre. So basically, this movie starts off with Gabriel Byrne being shot and killed, and then it jumps backwards six weeks to where all these five are gathered in the in the infamous lineup scene, and how they all pretty much became a team, and <clears throat> how they start started doing capers that led to them going into com into a conflict with Kaiser Suoze through his contact of Mr. Kobashi. Now, this all came together when they went to California and a fence that uh, named Red, then named uh, Redfoot, that uh, that the uh, McManus character knows, pretty much gave them a tip of a diamond heist. However, it's revealed that there were never really diamonds, there were drugs. <clears throat> and this is what, and this is how they get roped in with Suoze but through his contact of Kobeshi, played by the late, great Pete Postulate. And I thought Pete Postulate as the character of Kobeshi, who was like the middleman to uh, to uh, Kaiser Soze, I like Postulate in this movie. I like the calm, cool collectedness he have. And if you actually pay attention, you kind of get a, you get, you get a faint Asian dialect coming from his mouth. <clears throat> now again, when you get to the big twist, like I said, the twist puts everything in perspective and it makes and it makes a viewing of this movie more interesting because now you when you watch it again knowing what happened you're like oh okay oh okay oh okay and that's one of the things i and again that's one of the things that i admired about this movie is that it requires maybe one or two more watches to fully get the to fully get an understanding of, of what about brian singer and christopher McQuarrie were going for with this movie with this movie's narrative <clears throat> uh well like i said I think that's one of the strongest suits. And along with the actors, it's just how the story's told. And it's told in a very interesting way, very non-linear, very similar to how Quentin Tarantino did, you know, Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction, in which it's told out of sequence and it's being uh, in which it's told out of sequence. <clears throat> and I just like the manipulative natures of a, lot, of a lot of these characters, particularly that of the character of Verbal, as he's talking to the as he's talking to the uh, detective. And of course, he has one of the greatest lines where he says, you know, the greatest thing the devil ever did was making people think he never existed. And just like that, poof, he's gone. And then when you get to the twist, you realize that Verbal was the devil all along. So basically, the twist of this movie is that... <clears throat> so in this movie's universe, the character of, of uh, Kaiser Soze is built as this fictitious, as, the, as this urban legend amongst the criminal underworld. He's a Hungarian, maybe half German, who pretty much killed his entire family after the Hungarian mob held them hostage. So in addition to, so, and <clears throat> basically became this underground legend in which he, he, never derails with, he never deals with anyone directly. He always has handlers deal, do his business for him. So he's basically the, an unseen crime boss, like this shadowy figure who, you, who could come up, who can pop up at any moment and you won't know who he is because no one knows who, what he looks like or who he is. <clears throat> so... When you get to the big, to the climax and, and the massacre at the boat happens, we see Swartz, uh, Swartze kill, uh, we see Swartze kill Keaton. Now, prior to Keaton getting, getting off, 
We also see Fenster get, gets killed off after he tries to go again, after he tries to flee California. Then Kobashi has him whacked. And then when you get to the big climax, you know, uh, Todd is whacked. Um, <clears throat> McManus is also killed. And uh, now, now, mind you, while all this is happening, Verbal is seeing all this transpire. And of course, he's frozen in shock. Now, again, he's a cripple. What can he do, right? You know, like, he can't do anything. He can't defend himself. So as he's telling, as he's weaving this tale, you know, for the most part, the, the Chaz Pelementary character buys it. Now, as interrogation is going on, we f it's revealed to us that the character of Verbal has immunity. So pretty much almost nothing can be held against him for the most part. <clears throat> So after he's done weaving his tail, he leaves. He leaves the police office, and then as um, then as Chas Pelimentary's character is talking to another cop, he starts looking. You know, he starts you know thinking about the story and what's going what's going down, and then he starts looking at pictures on the wall, and then all of a sudden things start to sound a little off when he replays what verb the story that Verbal was telling him. <clears throat> so basically. Verbal was telling the Chaz Pelimentary this fabricated story just by piecing together just things all around him in this office. Like the name Kobayashi came from the Kobayashi coffee mug. Uh, the name of Redfoot came from a name that he saw on a bulletin board. So basically the entire story that was, that was woven was just Verbal telling the story on the spot just to throw the scent off his trail. <clears throat> And then it's it's really revealed that Verbal was Soise the entire time. And it kind of lists, asks, asks, raises the question as, is did Verbal f come up with the character come up with the character of Soise to throw people off his scent just in general while he does it while he does while he conducts his business as a criminal? Or is Soise an actual real person and Verbal is his uh and the name of Verbal Kint is his alias? I like how the movie never gives you a clear answer. The only answer it does gives you is that Verbal manipulated the entire, all the events of this movie. And I like it <laughs> because the lead, the most unassuming character was the criminal mastermind. And then you find out in the end that he was never, that he never had cerebral palsy at all. He faked the whole thing. <clears throat> and that even in that Kobayashi, and that the character of Kobayashi actually did in fact work for the Verbal character. <clears throat> I thought the end of this movie was actually top notch. It was great. It worked, it worked so well for me. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Like, yeah, I thought the, I think the usual. I, mean, I can see how this movie can be confusing to a lot of people. And when and when I was watching, yeah, there were moments where I was maybe a little bit confused. But then when you get to the ending, it does make us. It make it does make a lot of things make sense. So at least I'll give it that. But again, from a production standpoint, well done. From a writing standpoint, one probably one of the best written movies of the um, of the mid nineties. The cast is on point. Everything about this movie is an absolute win. Which is why I'm going to give The Usual Suspects a 9 out of 10. I thoroughly enjoyed this movie a lot. So yeah, those are my thoughts on The Usual Suspects. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Like the video and subscribe. And remember, the greatest thing the devil ever did was making people believe he didn't exist. And then, poof, he's gone.